Now Wrath of the Lich King has actually been announced, there's a really big question that people are asking. Is it worth actually doing Sunwell? And the reason people are asking this is because if you're coming back to get ready for Wrath of the Lich King, actually getting geared out probably isn't a priority. It's more about getting alts to 70, getting your profession sorted, but also getting a little bit of gear that's going to make leveling easier. Now, I've compared every single item from Sunwell and Tier 6 to items that you're going to be able to obtain very, very early in Phase 1 of Wrath of the Lich King. And I want to show you some examples of items that can be really, really good and items that are just going to get replaced even before stepping foot into a heroic. There will be some key takeaways from this where you don't need to compare every single item, so make sure you stick around until the end. From Kalagos, for example, Dragon Scale Encrusted Longblade. Whilst this can absolutely be used by rogues in their offhand, it's probably going to be primarily looked at as a tanking weapon due to the high stam, very fast speed, expertise and haste. You're probably like, it ain't got defense on, it's not a tanking weapon. Who needs defense? What, what warrior needs defense at the moment but you'd probably get this and be really excited and think it's going to last a long time but actually there's something that's fairly similar and it's just from a quest which you could probably solo in Zoldrak so you'll be doing this around level 75 sword of heart-wrenching slaughter which well it's a little bit faster it's got higher damage per second it's got higher stamina it's got strength on whereas dragon scale encrusted longblade hasn't got strength on and then you're just trading the expertise and haste for parry and dodge so it's definitely a more defensive weapon now i don't want you thinking this is your pre-raid bis as a warrior in phase one of wrath of the lich king i'm trying to be extremely realistic here and i'm not picking absolute bis items for these as a comparison because ultimately every item in some world can be replaced by pre-raid bis there might be one or two exceptions to the rule but are you really bothered about getting that one or two exceptions that you are a hundred percent going to replace in nax whilst most rogues are combat fang of Kalagos is another example with 108 dps 25 agility and it's got some nice haste and attack power which absolutely would be replaced by librarian's paper cutter which is just a boe that you'll buy from the auction house with higher dps faster speed which makes it even more useful for assassination a decent amount of haste and a decent amount of crit again a very easily obtained item when you ding level 80 now when i said there's exceptions to the rules rings and necks are one of those because taking band of lucent beams as an example where you're getting haste spell power and mana per five a decent amount of intellect as well being 25 there isn't a single ring you're going to get early on in wrath of the lich king that's actually got three stats that are useful and to actually beat out some of these rings you're going to need to get pre-raid bis for example, if you wanted haste and spell power, you're going to be getting the ring from Ingvar the Plunderer. If you wanted spell power and mana per five, you're going to be getting the ring from Mage Lord Urom. Or if spirit was more your thing, you can get one from Prophet, again on Heroic, which gives spirit and spell power. And you'll notice all of these give more spell power, they all give more intellect, but they will only give you two of the stats. So if you wanted haste, spell power and mana per five, to get a good balance of them all. Actually, the Sunwell rings, like this one as an example, is a good idea to try and get hold of. Another rule of thumb to bear in mind when you're trying to get loot from Sunwell Plateau is any of these items that have got free sockets are naturally going to stand up against pre-raid bis items in Wrath of the Lich King. It's not to say that they're going to actually be better than pre-raid bis items, but they will at least come close. Because taking the leggings for a Holy Paladin, for example, leg plates of the Holy Juggernaut, with 41 intellect, crit, 53 spell power, and some mana per five, you don't necessarily need to get pre-ray bis again to replace these because you could get standard issue leg guards which is only honored with argent crusade which will not take you long at all you'll be trading the crit and mana per five for a large amount of haste being 40 it comes with more standard spell power a lot more intellect but two less sockets so as a holy paladin in wrath of the lich king you would be going for a lot of intellect so being able to put three 16 intellect gems in here you're going to end up with 89 intellect in total versus the 85 intellect that you're going to get from the blue from Argent Crusade Honored, but you will get more spell power. Now, of course, you could absolutely get better than those blues that I was showing you, but again, I want to be realistic and say, look, these you can get very, very easy because ultimately you're going to want to get to 80 quick and get into Nax. We know there's probably going to be a week, you know, before Nax actually opens. I'm pretty sure that was actually even confirmed. But still, if you're going to replace any of this gear, you're not really going to get that much time to spam non-stop heroics to get full pre-raid bis before you step foot in Nax. And then taking Starstalker 
leg guards for hunters or even enhancement shamans. Again, it's got free sockets on and the fact that it's got hit on as well is really, really useful. These actually stand up to pre-raid bis, complete pre-raid bis, like the leggings of the stone halls, which is from Iron Shaper on Heroic, giving 60 agility versus the 57. So there's only a free agility difference there. Intellect you're getting a lot less of, it's 24 versus 52, but you're getting those free sockets. And there's only a 60 attack power bonus difference in these. So I would argue putting three 16 agility gems in these legs would actually be better than anything pre-raid bis that you're going to be able to get. Because again, from another heroic, hollowed mandible leg plates are probably the only things that come close. They've got a similar amount of attack power, well, four more attack power. You're getting haste instead of hit, which haste is very nice for things like an enhancement shaman. You're still getting less intellect, but the agility is very similar, only being a five difference. But you can make up for more than that using the Star Stalker leg guards by putting that extra agility gem in the legs. I'm not going to compare any more legs because they're all the same, whether you look at cloth, leather, plate. Mal, you know, if you look at any of those, they pretty much are the same. If they've got free gem sockets in, there's a good chance you'll be able to go into Nax wearing them still. Or if you're lucky, you'll get a pair of legs, which probably will be an upgrade from a heroic dungeon. But I think you're looking at going into heroics to be able to replace any of those three socketed legs. Now, those were just the lower eye level gear. So what about Kill Jaden? Because Kill Jaden drops 164 eye level gear. So let's look at some of those pieces and see how they stand up to the items in early game Wrath of the Lich King. And I am going to talk about the legendary bow, but I'm gonna do that in a little while once we've got for everything else. So hunters, don't go anywhere because I think you're gonna be very surprised with what I've got to say. So from KJ, if we were to take Sunflare as an example with haste, crit, and 292 spell power. Now this is a big weapon and you're probably looking at it thinking, yeah, that will be fine. That will last me until I get a Nax weapon. Well, actually, as most casters will know, one of the first reputations you're going to work on on Wrath of the Lich King will be the Kirin Tor because this is where you get your caster head enchant and you get that head enchant at revered and at the same time you'll get flame heart spell scalpel which is a dagger so it's exactly the same weapon type it comes with 33 intellect instead of 20 you get 25 crit instead of 30 crit so you are actually dropping a little bit of crit there but it does come with 34 hit rating and you are absolutely going to need hit rating early on as you can imagine and it comes with 355 spell power over the 292 spell power that you get from the KJ weapon. Now, whilst that doesn't seem massive, is it worth going into a Sunwell GDKP and potentially spending 20,000 gold on an item that you're going to replace in the first couple of days of Wrath of the Lich King? And we are talking before you even get into Nax. And I think that's the point of this video. More so, if you're running it as a guild, you know, and you're getting upgrades, that's great. It doesn't matter, does it? But if you're going into GDKPs, spending gold on this gear... I would advise against it heavily because it's not going to last you very long at all. Unless for some reason you're buying this in GDKP runs to then, I don't know, try and pass in some well in your guild runs or split runs or whatever you're doing. But overall, remember, all of it can be replaced. And I mean, even with that dagger, you can get better than that. Again, I'm never giving you pre-bis options because I don't think it's fair. But if you wanted to get the crafted dagger, whilst it comes with no intellect, it's got a hell of a lot more spell power being 408, more crit being 53 and 30 hit rating. So you can actually see the Titan Steel Spellblade is very, very nice in comparison to the KJ weapon and even the Kirin Tor weapon. I was going to leave it to the end, but I'm going to put you hunters out your misery now. Do you need to worry about getting Thoradel, the star's fury, your own legendary weapon? No. And actually, the reason you don't need to worry about it mainly is whilst it will be convenient while you're leveling. So if you get it purely just for leveling, then yeah, hats off to you, no problem at all. But you can do more damage while you're leveling, which arguably is what I would want to do. You know, rather than the convenience of not having to worry about ammo, I would much rather do as much damage as possible to kill the mobs quicker. Now, when you look at the amount of DPS it does, being 163, instantly that looks really really good in comparison to any other item including those from Wrath of the Lich King. If you were to take Nezingwery 4000 for example which is a crafted gun it's only got 129.6 and you're like yeah that's weird why is that why is it so high? Well because Foradel doesn't actually use ammunition doesn't take into account the weapon DPS that you're going to get from your ammo. So if you were stocked up on timeless arrows which gives a 53 bonus DPS you have to instantly take that away from the DPS of Foradel. So if you're not aware, at level 72, you'll be able to start making, if you're an engineer or have got an engineering friend, Saronite Razorheads, which actually gives 67.5 damage per second. So in actual fact, Golden Bow of Kelphalas, which again is from Sunwell, 
would even be better to use while leveling with Saronite razor heads than the legendary bow, which is quite mental really. So just to show you how quickly you could actually rival this weapon, just a 162 eye level weapon, which is actually only two eye level lower than the legendary, comes out 161.1 DPS. So yes, it's lower eye level, but it is only just a touch lower dps which is not normal for legendary weapons so as you can imagine flashing some of these weapons up on the screen any of these could replace foradel very very easily from reputations or from dungeons or even from crafting and the same really applies for all the weapons from kill jadens so if you were to take the two-handed sword as an example yes it's got three sockets which instantly makes this really nice but weapon dps for the vast majority of people that are going to use a two-handed weapon is very important so again can be replaced with a crafted weapon it can be replaced in a heroic dungeon but actually if you was using this you could comfortably use it all the way to 80 and you would probably just want to replace it before you got into nax and again like all things that come with sockets especially like these borderland pain grips from kj if you're a plate using dps because of those two sockets it just makes it so strong that actually you'd probably use these straight into nax because if you was to compare them just to a random blue heroic you're going to get a ton more strength out of your kj gloves because you're going to be able to put two strength gems in them you are losing some agility so you're losing a bit of crit but actually overall on secondary stats they're even higher than these item level 200 blues the cloak of unforgivable sin again you could easily use this into nax and it's all about that gem socket giving 72 attack power 32 haste agility and stamina it's better than the 187 honored item that you can get from argent crusade being cloak of holy extermination and again due to that extra socket it even holds up against the ice strikers cloak which is crafted Yes, it's got 100 attack power on and 24 agility, so it's got less agility, it's got that extra attack power, but you are missing out on that socket. And with that socket, you could put what you want in, you know, agility, put in hit, whatever you need at the time. So while Ice Strikers will be better overall, you can see the level of gear that you're going to need to get to replace the cape from KJ. I'll be honest with you, all the heads that drop from KJ are a little bit weird. If we take the Mal one, for example, Coif of Illyria, as we know, the vast majority of DPS are going to end up going engineering. So the best thing to compare it to is the engineering head because everyone's going to want to get theirs made as soon as physically possible. And it's very very good it's a very good head and you could absolutely go straight into nax using it but the engineering head is better and that does apply all round even if you was to look at helm of burning righteousness which is the holy paladin head you would still use the engineering goggles over it crux of the apocalypse again for you rogues is just going to need to be in direct competition with librarian paper cutter and due to how well assassination is with faster weapons you're still going to end up using your level 80 blue golden star for the cinder eye which gives 293 spell power three sockets which we know straight away way is going to be very valuable and a good amount of haste could be directly compared to staff of wayward principles from a heroic which has a ton more haste but not that much more spell power to say that with the golden staff of cinder eye you're going to get free sockets to put whatever you want in but the spirit is very similar in fact it's more on your tbc weapon than it would be on your wrath weapon you're going to go down a little bit on intellect but this is the sort of weapon that i see a resto druid using where you could just socket this out with pure spell power and go straight into knacks with it hammer of sanctification on the other hand it's a shame that it's only one socket if it was two this would be very different but if it was two on a main arm weapon it'd probably be very overpowered but you could compare this directly to worm rest accord revered which if you don't know as a healer it will probably be the first reputation you do because it's where the healing head enchant comes from so as you get your head enchant you're also going to get a main arm weapon and again that's not pre-ray bis but you know i'm just giving you examples of easily achievable items remember that tattered cape of antonidas i hope i'm saying that right now this is very good and again it's because it's got a socket i sound like a broken record but the haste is very very similar to that of say ancient dragon spirit cape which is a 200 from a heroic the spell power is not dissimilar the intellect's not dissimilar obviously you're going to lack on the stamina but you have got that red socket with a two spell power bonus as well so you can get an extra 21 spell power from this by 19 from the gem and two from the spell power bonus so this is actually going to end up with 63 spell power versus 51 spell power so if spell power is all you're interested in actually this cape again will serve you into Nax. Now that's all the KJ loot I want to talk about, which if that was all you was interested in, then I've probably lost you now. But what about the trinkets? So Glimmering Naru Sliver, it's got 63 spell power on and used gets 250 mana each second for eight seconds. And it's channeled on a five minute cooldown. So that's 2k mana over eight seconds. Now that's got some potential when you're leveling as anyone that uses mana, but it's also got potential when you're healing at level 80. It's got more static spell power than the 
Mercurial Alchemist Stone. It's not got that much less spell power than the Dark Moon card Illusion. And the reason I'm directly comparing it to this is because the Dark Moon card Illusion actually gives you 1500 mana back on a five minute cooldown. So using the Sunwell Trinket, you're going to get more mana back, but less spell power. And that is really strong, even for DPS. Like if you're a mage, don't sleep on that. You know, mainly for leveling, but you know, if your healers have got it and you're like, oh, I'll get that, because that spell power change, you know, from healing to spell power on all of these items are going to make a big difference. Because some of the healing gear, once it's got spell power, is actually itemized better than cast the DPS gear. And I want to leave you with one more, and it's a sad one to leave you with. Sorry, Ferals. If you're going to want Stanchion of Primal Instinct, you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Look at it, you know, 1195 Feral attack power, a nice amount of agility, the stamina, who cares, really? But 94 attack power and armor pen. Whilst it is very good and it will serve you very well, it really doesn't take long to get a decent Feral weapon anyway. So if you don't happen to get hold of this during TBC, I really wouldn't worry. Because even if you just wait till you do the arena in Zoldrak, which is the champion of anguish, you're going to going to get a pole arm called Icy Barb Spear, which gives 1267 feral attack power versus 1195, 62 agility versus the 75, 88 attack power versus the 94, and 61 crit versus the armor pen. And the crit's going to be a lot more valuable earlier on than the armor pen anyway. And that's it. I know this might have seemed a bit of a strange video because we've sort of just directly compared items, but it might give you a bit of an idea on do you need to worry about Sunwell gear. You might have just looked at all of this and you're like, well, actually, I'm, I'm not even going to bother. Or you might have looked at it and gone, well, it's going to help me while leveling, so yeah, I'm going to spend hundreds of thousands in GDKP runs, you know? So anyway, like and subscribe. Roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you remember when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.